This is Ray Charles. I'm a member of the board of ASMAC, and I'd like to tell you about this wonderful organization. The founders of the American Society of Music Arrangers and Composers and its subsequent board of directors and members have contributed greatly to the international music scene of the last 75 years. The immense talent and creativity of its members can be heard internationally in nearly all American produced recordings, films, television, video, and live concerts, not to mention the millions of published songs, scores, parts, and charts. However, many are not aware that ASMAC is responsible for securing the rights and protections of musicians' union contracts for what is known as the music preparation end of the business, arranging, orchestrating, and copying. The earliest arrangers worked for popular music publishers as house arrangers. They were required to take down melodies, make commercial piano parts, vocal orchestrations, and dance orchestrations for vaudeville acts, all for a weekly salary or paid by piecework. Arrangers added counter melodies and other enhancements to give depth and color to the music. The work of arrangers was owned and copyrighted by the publisher, who became the sole owner. But in the 1920s, the scene changed drastically due to the demand for dance band music. Arrangers and orchestrators were also needed to create the silent film music libraries for orchestral accompaniment for film screenings and vaudeville shows in thousands of theaters across the country. With the advent of radio and sound film, arrangers were consulted on production problems, sound recordings, radio broadcasts, and in the motion picture industry. In the eight Hollywood film studio music departments in 1938, arrangers were very much in demand and were often hired as staff members. But problems began to develop for arrangers when the studios wanted to reuse the arrangements in multiple film projects. The studios and their publishers did not want to pay a royalty or reuse payments to the arrangers. In the early days, the organization then called ASMA concentrated on issues related to screen credits, better working conditions, improved union scales, winning many of these battles. Robert Russell Bennett became the first president and served four successive terms. The organization had both Hollywood and New York chapters in those days. By 1940, ASMAC was working closely with major figures in the American Federation of Musicians and succeeded in its effort to secure more lucrative contracts for arrangers. During World War II, ASMAC boasted more than 100 members and published a newsletter which reached 2,500 subscribers nationally. In the 1950s, with a general downturn in the music business, the organization stood its ground and advised its members how to negotiate better deals, especially in the recording industry. ASMAC continued to hold social events to provide its members with networking opportunities. The monthly luncheons, which started decades ago, continue today. ASMAC has always provided its members with opportunities to improve the art and craft of arranging and orchestrating with its master classes and workshops. The organization honors outstanding members of the profession with awards, including the Golden Score Award, the President's Award, the Irwin Costell Award, and our Honor Our Own Certificates. We also have given scholarships to students since the 1970s. ASMAC continues to be a vital organization committed to its original purposes. ASMAC mentors the upcoming generation of talented musicians who will stand on the shoulders of the hundreds of outstanding members 
past and present of this organization. We invite you to join us as a full member, an associate member, or as a student member, especially now as we celebrate our 75th anniversary. <laughs>